welcome back to the channel and if you're new welcome I am your little darling narrator and on this channel I read stories not just any stories but I think I read some really great stories for the young readers and if you are not subscribed to this channel I strongly recommend you go ahead and you subscribe because all we do here are read good stories for the young readers and if there's any story that you like don't forget hit that like button that just helps this channel and we appreciate all the support that we've been getting so stay tuned The name of this story is called Franklin's Bicycle Helmet, based on the characters created by Paulette Bourgeois and Brenda Clark. Franklin could count by twos and tie his shoes. He could zip zippers and buckle buckles, but Franklin couldn't buckle up his bicycle helmet anymore. It was too small. Franklin's mother took him to the store to get a new helmet. There were rows and rows of helmets to choose from. Franklin picked a silver and white one with a flashing red light on top. This is the one I want, he said. Franklin's mother checked the fit. It was just right. Are you sure you like this helmet? She asked. It's a little flashy. I think it's great, Franklin replied. Okay, said his mother. If that's the one you want, that's the one we'll get. Franklin did a happy dance. That afternoon, Franklin practiced his hand signals for the bike safety rally. You're going to do fine tomorrow, said Franklin's father. And I think Constable Raccoon will be impressed with your new helmet. Franklin smiled proudly. I can't wait to show it to my friends, he said. The next morning, Franklin took his time getting to the rally. He wanted all his friends to be there when he arrived. He planned to surprise everyone with his new helmet. When he got to the schoolyard, Franklin hid behind some bushes. He could hear his friends talking. Have you seen those funny helmets with the flashing light on top? asked Fox. I wouldn't wear one, said Beaver. You'd look like a fire engine with one of those on your head. Suddenly, Franklin wasn't so sure about his new helmet. He took it off and hung it on his handlebar. Franklin left his bicycle behind the bushes and walked over to his friends. Where's your bike? asked Beaver. Um, I got a flat tire, Franklin fibbed. I can't ride in a rally, he added sadly. You can borrow my bike, offered Bear, my helmet too. Franklin cheered up. Okay, Bear, he said, thanks. Constable Raccoon blew his whistle. It was time for the rally to begin. The riders pushed their bikes toward the starting gate. What's that noise? asked Fox. That's my bike, Rabbit said proudly. I put cardboard in the wheel. Now my bike sounds like a motorcycle. Or like a piece of cardboard is stuck in your wheel, said Fox. He and Beaver <laughs> laughed and ran ahead. Rabbit looked embarrassed. Maybe I should take the cardboard out, he said. I think it sounds neat, said Franklin. You do? asked Rabbit. I like it too. Rabbit thought for a moment, then made up his mind. My bike is going to stay just the way it is, he declared. Constable Raccoon went over the safety rules. And anyone who finishes the course without making a mistake, 
will earn a shiny safety sticker, he announced. Everyone was excited. Fox was the first to get a sticker. Then Beaver and Rabbit earned their prizes. Bear did a perfect job too. Finally, it was Franklin's turn. He stepped forward with Bear's bike and helmet. Hold on, Franklin, said Constable Raccoon. That helmet is too big for you. A helmet should fit snugly to give proper protection. Franklin was disappointed. I'm sorry, Franklin, said Constable Raccoon, but it wouldn't be safe for you to ride with that helmet. There will be another rally soon. I'll keep this sticker for you until then, okay? Franklin nodded sadly. The rally was over. Franklin was helping Constable Raccoon pack up when he noticed Rabbit behind the bushes. Rabbit had found his helmet. Franklin raced over. What are you doing? He cried, snatching the helmet away. Rabbit was surprised. Is that yours? He asked. Yes, Franklin admitted. But I don't want anyone making fun of it. I won't make fun of it, said Rabbit. I think it's amazing. You do? said Franklin. He sighed. So do I. Franklin looked at his helmet for a minute. Then he put it on. Wait! shouted Franklin as he ran to Constable Raccoon. Well now, said the constable, whose helmet is that? It's mine, Franklin replied, looking at Fox and Beaver, and I like it. I like it too, said Constable Raccoon. It fits you properly, and you'll be seen from a mile away. Be safe, be seen. Franklin took a deep breath. Is it too late for me to try out for my safety sticker? Constable Raccoon smiled. You're just in time, he answered. Franklin finished the course perfectly and received his own shiny safety sticker. Then he rode home as fast as he could. I knew all my hand signals, Franklin told his parents. Look at the sticker I earned. Congratulations, said his mother. I knew you could do it, said his father. Did everyone like your helmet? Franklin grinned. I don't know, he replied, but I sure do. Well, that ends our story. Can you smell the takeaway in this story? Franklin was so happy with his new helmet he had picked that he couldn't wait to show his friends. Unfortunately, he heard them talking about a bicycle helmet that looked exactly like his. That made him feel ashamed of his new helmet. Now, when he heard them criticize Rabbit's cardboard that he had put in the wheels of his bicycle to make it sound like a motorcycle, Franklin told Rabbit he liked it. And that encouraged Rabbit to decide he was going to keep the cardboard on his bicycle and he didn't care what anyone thought about it. He liked it. Now, it so happens Rabbit finds Franklin's helmet that he had hidden in the bushes. Now, Franklin rushes over to him and tells him that's his helmet. And Rabbit asked him, why is, he, why is he hiding it? Well, Franklin told him, I don't want anyone to make fun of it. And that's when Rabbit looked at him and told him he liked it. That gave Franklin the encouragement he needed to claim not just his helmet, but his joy and his happiness when he first picked it. And that just goes to show you, don't let anyone steal your joy or your happiness. And people can do that sometimes, but you just have to be sure that you don't let them do that. Okay, I hope that's what you got out of this story. Well, until next time, my young readers, I am your little darling narrator. Out.